What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Hilliard Guest. I'm a writer, producer, and the co-chair of the WJ West uh, Committee of Black Writers, as well as the co-chair of the Writers Education Committee. I want to welcome you all to the sag After Foundation's Conversations at Home program. Uh, it is my pleasure to introduce the amazing cast of the Wonder Years, E.J. Williams. You can give yourself applause and wave. That's all. Saquon Sablo. <laughs> Laura Karaoke and actor, SAG After Foundation board member himself, Dulé Hill, everybody. Bah, 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 bah. Glad to be here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's just jump right on in again. Thank you guys for all being here. Um, let's start with, uh, and any of you guys can just jump in. I'm pretty open on this. Um, how you all came to the show and uh, what was the audition process for you since we're talking to actors? That's what they really want to know. You know, we'll start with you, um, G. Go ahead, anybody. Well, I, I would say this process was definitely something that's, I would say, out of words. And I would say it's out of words really because, or I don't have words to describe it because it wasn't a usual process. And um, I said it because, one, me coming from a different variety of style, I had already had a few things under my belt that wasn't strictly a series live action thing. So, um processes are always different and this process was way different so I always knew something was going to be off track a little bit in the process but I came to this and I'm like wait hold on this has like I never would have thought this would happen so um I experienced a lot of things in this process that I would have never thought I would um all good things uh it was a roller coaster of different emotions not knowing what was going to happen but I mean hey we made it here yes love that what about you Laura so this audition process is my first pilot season post college graduation. Wow! So super duper <laughs> exciting. Um, just just so you know, Laura, actors hate you right now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it happened pretty quick. Okay, they put in Vaseline on their face. They ready to come at you, girl. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, so yeah, super busy time. Um, I was filming another show at the time and. When it came in and I read the script, I was like, okay, I have to be a part of this. It was an <laughs> incredible pilot. And so yeah, I did the audition. The next steps were what? Um, producer sessions. And then I started testing. And here we are. It was all on Zoom, as you know. COVID. Oh my God. Uh, but um, <laughs> Endemic yeah. testing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it was a great process. And yeah, here we are. <laughs> You guys are all so perfectly guys. We do. We don't get it. Um, Saquon. Man, it was. Um, first, can I, I spoiler? Um, she, her other show was Black Lightning, I believe. Okay. No. <laughs> uh, that she was in. I, I like to. I like to brag on my on my TV kids. Um, <laughs> yeah, this was. Uh, it was. It was. Um, it was bittersweet because we were all in the house because of COVID, right? Um, I had just finished shooting a show called Delilah and a bunch of auditions came and i was sort of in this weird point where i was super exhausted i just changed management i was mm. you know and as an actor you know that feeling you're in between you don't know what your next job is going to be you're thinking of how and how you want to live your life you know i was just in a in a huge transition i i left new york i moved um and was just really uh, excited to work on my entertainment company and um this audition came amongst a chunk of auditions so many so people gonna hate me it was like i had eight audition opportunities in this one week and i decided wow. to cut four of them away and focus on four i was like either i'm gonna do eight auditions really badly or mm -hmm. i'm gonna do four really really well and and wonder years was one of the one of those auditions and um it was my second time doing a zoom audition i've been doing a lot of self tapes which um, I know a lot of people, a lot of actors, we hate self tapes. Um, I grew to love self tapes to the point to where I started to be like, oh God, I gotta go to the room when, when I had to go in person again. I was like, mm -hmm. I gotta go for real? You know, <laughs> I love controlling my environment, my lighting, you know, gluing my, sticking my script to the side. You know, I just love all of that. And so- She, she just wanna cheat through like, that's all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, so doing it, you know, doing it on Zoom yeah. and having to be live, you know, it's a little more stressful. It's different than a self tape because you're live, you know, mm -hmm. and you need your internet to work. You need your lighting to work. You have so many technical aspects that are happening that, you know, it can, it can throw you, um, you know, 
with all of that pressure, you know, so similar to what EJ was saying, like, I'm thinking, you know, something could go wrong. And then you get on there and everybody was, um, they were just so likable. You know, mm. I, I was just like, man, like, I was like, I like everybody on here, you know? And, <laughs> and um, I was, uh, you want that. You don't want to be in a situation where you're working with people um, and, and, you, and you're scared you don't like them and they don't like you, but you're on the job, you know? I was like, I like these people. I could see myself mm. doing this. So, so doing that audition process, that test process during the pandemic um, was stressful, but I was so thankful um, just just to have the opportunity. So I was like, I'm gonna make this. I'm gonna I'm gonna make the most out of this. Whether whether uh, whether I get the job or not, I'm gonna win the room, and they're gonna put me in something else. You know. So I always <laughs> think that way. You always want to book yes. the room. So yes. apparently, I booked the role. So I'm thankful. Well, we'll talk about that a little later. That's, it's interesting sitting on the other side. The things that I see that I would have changed in myself if I was an actor now, you know what I mean? I'm sure you guys all see that too. So, um, so what about you, Dulay? How did you come to the show? Uh, for myself, well, one, I, I want to talk about how, say, kind of talked about putting the script up on the side. Mm -hmm. I'm like, look, you you do, to, I'm, as an actor, I believe you need to do whatever you need to do to deliver the best performance. Right. And it's really what works for you. I think oftentimes we, we get caught up in trying to do it someone else's way. Mm -hmm. But their way is not necessarily your way. So I actually applaud actors who say, you know what, this is what works for me. Whether it's on screen, whether it's on the stage or whether it's in an audition room or actually on set, do what works for you. Uh, Absolutely. For myself coming into this, uh, this role, I had, when I knew this show was being announced, I saw the announcement, I knew that this was the type of role that I would want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, look, I mean, every day as actors, we see roles that we would want to do. The question is, are we allowed to do it? <laughs> so you have to go through that process. And even though I've had, I've been blessed to have success on screen on, in the television world over the course of the years, I still had to meet with Saladin and, and Fred Savage. Mm -hmm. Look, I'm like, a meeting is still an audition. People say, they're like, oh, I have a meeting, I have a meeting. It's an audition. Exactly. Cut it out. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? You've had time, you're going to sign on and you're going to have your interaction. And I, and I know Saladin a, you know, a long time, but we had a, we had a, an initial meeting and then eventually I had like a little work session with them where I read, we, 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 we uh, read the scenes, mm -hmm. at least a couple scenes from the pilot. And then, and then that was, that was it. Then it went through whatever, you know, up the chain and this and that. And the next thing I know, I was, I was a part of the show. Wow. So it was a little different from years ago when I would go into an, an audition room, but mm -hmm. it still was an audition. I don't right. care what Sally or Fred says. I'm like, man, that was an awful <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Either way, I'm very thankful that everyone at ABC and Saladin and Lee and everybody gave the okay to for me to join for me to join the cast. Because I'm I'm so glad to be able to work with Saquon and Laura and EJ mm -hmm. and Alan and the, the entire cast. It's really, mm -hmm. a, it's really a joyful experience. Right. It's 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 a trip there. Sometimes you know the universe comes together and the chemistry is just right. You know, mm -hmm. and and this show, you could tell from the first trailer when it came out, it was going to hit like on all levels, you know, and it was completely different from the original, which was a great freaking amazing show, you know. Mm -hmm. And let me ask you this. Did, did you guys all did they have any chemistry readings with you guys all? Like, how did they did they just know when when, when you guys auditioned that you guys were just right? Or did they have um, to bring you guys all in together and try to, you know, work that out? That's a good question. Uh, that's that's very uh yeah that's yeah you're right that is a good question. Um, based off my memory, I do remember after I I, I believe uh post after we got the job after I got the job, um I want to say probably a week later we got another call. They want me to meet um everybody who's a part of it. I think it was like some sometime between a few days and a week later, mm -hmm. and uh, I got into Zoom and I saw Saquon and Dulé and. I already knew something was gonna happen because as soon as I was let in, I just heard two adults burst out laughing. I'm like, what is going on? I just hear people like cracking up. So I'm like, oh, this, this is gonna be fun. Yeah. So I meet every, I meet uh, Saquon and Dulé. And then I wanna say afterwards, I then meet Laura. But when everything came together, the thing that I really appreciated the most is, uh, and I believe I've said this before, when it feels like a family reunion, you know you wanna stay. So for me, mm -hmm. um, I've done series regular jobs, but I've done that in the voiceover category. So it's a little different. You're not filming 24 seven with the same people. Mm -hmm. um, you're normally by yourself. 
and you'll see them time from time, but series in a live action job, you're with the same people Monday through Friday, Monday through Friday, over and over again. Yeah. So the environment definitely matters. So I, I, I want to say when, when I met them, I, I thought the environment was going to be pretty good. Don't. Anybody else have any thoughts on that? I, I, okay. I, was gonna say, I didn't do any chemistry reads. So I met everyone when we did our first uh, read through when everyone was cast. But kind of like how EJ was saying, like the chemistry was like instant and we all just work so well together. So just so you know, Laura, all the girls have now taken off the earrings. They're coming to get you. Just so you know. Oh, no. Like, oh, right out of college. Uh, oh, no chemistry reads. Okay, okay. really? Okay, really? Who's she now? Who's she now? Uh -huh. Oh, my God. She's Salomon Cousin. She's Salomon Cousin. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, say God. <laughs> no, it's funny. I, I I've had chemistry reads on other shows, but I think I think it was like a timing thing. I think time is of the essence. They were not planned. They were just like boom. And I'll tell you something funny. Um, EJ, I feel like EJ's dad said to me. Um, <laughs> he said. When I saw they cast you, I, I was having a feeling it was going to be EJ. I think because of the chocolate. He was like, oh, if you got a chocolate mama, maybe they might cast the chocolate, you know. That's because if you see a picture of my dad's younger sister, her and Saquon look just alike. Yeah, yeah, he always said yeah. I look like that. <laughs> that is so actually, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. I apologize. No, so yeah, I think that was that. But yeah, we didn't, I think, again, the pandemic of it all, you know, I um I've done chemistry reads on other um on other projects and and you trying to look people in the eye and see if it's <laughs> chemistry or whatever but or, or just see if they're fun or if you can get along you know um and I'll tell you something funny I've had I always were going for commercial auditions and I audition and play everybody's mom and the kids I audition with they always get the part and they always get another mom and I'm like I must be a really good acting coach because. <laughs> That's that little girl I was auditioning with. She over there baking cookies with a whole nother mama. <laughs> so, like, I've seen that happen so many times. That's you know, it's funny. funny. It, it, you, you brought up that thing, Laura, about, you know, the, the dark skin thing. And I was like, it's actually being somebody who's fairly light skin, I guess. It's one of the things I love about the show. You look like everybody in my neighborhood, right? Yeah. You don't see it on TV. The father might be dark and the mother might be light. Whatever it is, it's always, but you guys look like a real black, I'm just going to say it, like a real black man, <laughs> you know, to me. I think and, that was something that Saladin really had an intention on. He really wanted to reflect that on the screen to represent the family that he knew growing up and the right. world that he embodied growing up. And I applaud him for it. For, I, applaud, I applaud him and Lee and, and Fred for all being on the same page of, of let's, let's, ex let's show this family unit in this way. Because yeah. you're right, we often don't see that on the television screen. And when, you, when you're watching this from, even from an actor's point of view, I'm always curious of, because, you know, I know Salon and I was always curious about, because I interviewed him for the Writers Guild podcast also. Okay. That one's, that one's going to be dropping soon also. <clears throat> and we talked about, one of the things I love is the authentic way that it feels in that world. You know, like I didn't realize there was a neighborhood like that in that particular part of the South, mm. you know, that had that feel like as it was like when me back in, in East Palo Alto, Oakland, like that, right. like Panther, I, I was surrounded by well, Black Oakland. Panthers as a kid. You know, mm -hmm. same thing, you know, we cousins, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so um, that to me immediately brought up this nostalgia for me, you know? And I as think it's as... even cool. Okay, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was go gonna ahead. say, I think it's even um, cool to be able to hear that because for a lot of people growing up, they don't realize that certain things that other people do are just as normal as right. what they do. Yeah. So when you see when you see what other families do, and for this example, us as a black family compared to uh, Kevin and his family on the show, you still see that no matter what people go through, it's still a sense of normalcy. There are different senses of normalcies for different families, just like there are different th uh, traditions in different cultures, but that's normal for them. So it's great to be able to see when you see this show, and even when you see the original, the different things that were normal compared to each other's families. Absolutely. Like, um, I was talking to him about nuance, right? It's one of the things that I think we, we as Black people judge white people when they write us, right? Is mainly the thing that's missing is nuance, mm. right? 
And you can always tell when it's coming from a black point of view, especially we know this is kind of inspired by Saladin's life. <clears throat> and so you see all the nuance. Here's a funny little thing, EJ, that I, I was telling them. There's, there's, there's a little kind of a callback, re re recurring thing that you do where you ride your bike and you like drop it down in the, in the, in the front yard. <laughs> it's a simple thing. But you know, Dulé, we're pretty close in age. That's something we did in like the 70s, oh, yeah. right? Where we would do that because you know why? You wouldn't worry about nobody stealing your bike. Exactly. Because you knew everybody in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. right? E even if you lived in a hood, you wasn't worried. And not in the 70s, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Because everybody's like, oh, that's Ray Ray bike. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's the little things that I see that you guys always somehow in every episode drop it in. You know what I mean? It's just fascinating. And, it, and look, it always starts on the page. It starts, mm -hmm. you know, with that creative process. And Saladin has done a great job of bringing on writers who really can tap into that. Uh, and he has a, a very diverse writing writing room, which I think is something to be said about that because then you, you're you able to craft stories that are very specific, but also very universal. And I think when you're making television, that is something that 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 should be the the goal because when you're being beamed into households all across the country. You want it to be as relatable as possible, but also be able to tell your story as authentic as possible as well. Right. And there's one thing that's really hard to do. I mean, I'm more known for being a drama writer, but um, I think it's really hard to write comedy and yet it has drama and heart. Right. Every episode I tear up, every single episode, right? Yes. There are moments of... I know it's your fault, Saquon. So <laughs> every yes. single episode, I tear up. And there's several that I could think of, particularly like one in particular, this one of my favorite moments. I remember I told him this on the podcast too. One of my favorite moments where I lost it was when Bruce came back from Vietnam and there's the shot of EJ and him walking away and they, mm -hmm. they hold hands and they walk. It is so uh, I'm about to get there now. See, oh, got to make yeah. a brother cry. Yeah, uh, it was just so beautiful. But in May, I think it's because we don't get to see black people do that as much. Much love to, to you know what I mean? more. Yeah, who plays our older son, Bruce? Um, oh, he's so people good. text me and email me all the time. They like, what happened to Bruce? Is Bruce coming back? People, <laughs> they love you know, and to see those two brothers. Mm -hmm. um, to see two uh, brothers reconnecting, and you know, that's it's so special. Right. And so jumping, on what, you were, jumping right. on what you were saying, I think I like I, that's one thing I appreciate appreciate about this story being told is that we kind of break down that barrier a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yes, black men are strong. Yes, black men can take a lot, but black men also have emotional things going on inside of them. And being able to see whether it's Bill Williams, whether it's you know uh, Bruce Williams, or whether it's Dean Williams, to see the journey that they go on mm -hmm. and and allow themselves to Grandpa emerge. Clisby. It's a, and Grandpa Clisby. Yeah, and, yeah, and Grandpa <laughs> Clisby too. I think it's, it's, I'm thankful to be a part of a project that allows that to be shown. Mm -hmm. We're not just having this facade up of, of, uh, of, of all uh, ultimate strength all the time, because mm -hmm. that is not the real experience of being a black man in this world. Absolutely. And I think, and I think that's what so many people are, will and, and are relating to is the fact that this show feels so authentic. And like, I grew up in a neighborhood just like this, except I was on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It would look just like this. <laughs> you know, really, everybody act like that. It felt like that. You felt the music, you felt the soul, you felt the style. Everything felt exactly like that. So when you see, for example, just jumping to like the Cosby show, it was such a big difference than what we're used to seeing. Mm. This is so much more relatable to me, oh, you know? Right. And I'm speaking to myself, you know what I'm saying? Cause I ain't nobody. Um, <laughs> shut up, Dulé. And so, <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me ask you, Laura. <laughs> Laura, did you, did you do any research on like um, your black history a little bit to, to really get into her soul sister? You yeah. know, black power. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you sure. you roll in it, girl. You be in it. That she do. Um, yeah. I one of the like initial descriptions of Kim was that she was 
well, in the pilot, she has a line about H. Rep Brown and Bobby Seale, mm-hmm. and she reaches for the book Soul and Ice by Eldridge Cleaver. So I definitely wanted to know what this character was talking about and right. where her beliefs are coming from. Because also she's at a point where she's not sure how involved she wants to be with the party. She just knows she wants change. So then I had like I had to do research into where she's coming from so I could be as authentic as I could. Right. You learned some stuff, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. <laughs> Say, Khan, let me tell you, um, you, ha- you have children? Do you mind me asking? No, I don't. I don't. So you would never know. Because <laughs> you play this, okay, you play it like somebody's mama everybody wants. That's oh, right. Right? oh, I get that. I get so much love. I get that so, all the time. So many people wish they had you as a mama. Oh. They would not be doing the stupid stuff they're doing if they had you as a mama. <laughs> I can tell you that right now, <clears throat> for sure. And see, I grew up in this neighborhood where, and I tell people this all the time, where in my neighborhood, I was the only kid that I knew at my age, I probably was 12, 13, whatever, that I knew at my age who had, I had my mom and my, my, mom and my dad. Hmm. I didn't know anybody else who had a mother and father in my entire neighborhood. That I knew, and I knew everybody. Like inta- you mean intact family in- parents aren't divorced, yes. or they didn't know yes. who their dad was, or dad was. They didn't live they with their mother or, or father. They either had their father or they had their mother, and you know what was happening during that time. Or grandparents. As, yeah, as you know. Is. So I was the only person that I knew. So when I see you, you remind me a lot of my mom in the way you play her, you know. But my mom was a lot more. I'll get the bell on you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you give off, I could if you tested me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And do lay the your the slogan that they came up with it with be cool mm-hmm. is the most brilliant thing, I think, because you are playing a character that I've never seen you play, and you sitting in the pocket, you know, of dad. You know what I mean? That yeah, dad we that. all wish we had. You know, yeah, I, pre- I, mean? I appreciate that. I mean. First, I'll say, going back to, to Seikon, mm-hmm. when I was joining the cast and I knew that they were getting ready to cast Seikon, I told Saldi and, and Fred, they said, Seikon Semblo. I said, Shh. I said, you Seikon Semblo? Oh, I know exactly who that is. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? I don't think, you know, America, or at least the television audience has seen the brilliance, the full brilliance of Seikon as of yet. She's a phenomenal stage actress, mm-hmm. Tony nominee. And she really puts her foot in every role that she does. So it's not surprising to me that she's able to put her foot in Lillian Williams the way that she does. Mm-hmm. I paid I paid Dulé to say that. I paid him to say that. <laughs> <laughs> All I want is peanut butter and jelly sandwiches when I get back on set. Oh, peanut, peanut, butter. <laughs> peanut, butter. peanut butter. Can I say something? I want to say um, uh, I'm not a mother yet. Who knows what the future holds? But I I... My uh, when I was growing up, so my name is Sekon Sembla, which is a Liberian name. My dad was from Liberia, and when I was a kid, my dad would tell me that my name means mother. Um, so he would say, you know, Sekon it means mother. It means mama, mother. So my dad would call me mama when I was little. Um, and then the older I got, some other like Li- other Liberians were like, no, it means it means nobody owns me. And then somebody else said, it means sovereign. And I was like, and then somebody else said, no, it means teacher. So I was like, whatever it means, I think I'm encompassing all of that. And I've I've Mm -hmm. had just these awesome opportunities in my career to, um, you know, I'll give you mother. I'll give you a a sassy cop. (laughs) (laughs) I'll, I'll give you hooker with a heart of gold. I'll give you all those different characters, you know, and it's it's um it's a lot of fun to be able to sit in a character and have the opportunity to do it every episode and bring the character every time. Um, and then see that character in different um, instances. Like I said, I've played a lot of moms or auditioned to be a lot of moms. And um, it's it's a joy uh, to play EJ, <laughs> to play to play EJ and Laura's mom is a joy as well. Mm-hmm. I, I really enjoy them. And um, I just really appreciate, appreciate that compliment. Indeed. I wanna, I, go ahead, go ahead do yeah, it. Jumping back into the uh, the be cool of it all. Oh yeah. I'm very thankful that Sal Dean and Lee and Fred and ABC have given me the opportunity to play the role. Because oftentimes at actors, you can start finding yourselves in lanes because you don't have the opportunity to show the breadth of what you can do. 
Right. Um, I'm not the same actor. I'm the same person, but not the same 20 year old actor that was playing Charlie Young. And I'm not even the same actor that was playing, playing Gus a few years back. It's a, uh, but that's the joy. That's the, the joy of being creative. That's the joy of what we do is to be able to expand our, our lens, expand, expand the reach of what we do. And Bill Williams is somebody that I could relate to. I mean, I'm a tap dancer. So this is a jazz cat. I grew up around a whole bunch of jazz cats who moved just like Bill Williams. My father is one of the coolest cats that I've ever known, along with my uncles and things like in all of the, the male figures in my life. So when I read the script, it was very familiar to me. Mm. I said, I've not played this guy on television yet, but I do know who this person is. But yeah, that's I can feel you channeling him. But that's, that's what got me yeah. excited about playing this role is because mm -hmm. I had not had a chance to play him, right. play someone like him yet. And hopefully, you know, as life goes on, we can keep evolving and keep growing. And maybe in uh, 20 years, we'll see EJ playing, playing his own <laughs> Bill Williams. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let me ask you guys. I one. have to say that Dulé, Dulé, things that aren't written, it's what Dulé brings to the character that is so good. Mm -hmm. One of the my favorite things is whenever there's, there's scenes where Dulé doesn't have to say anything, but he's always like, eh. <laughs> right. he's doing like i mean it's like that jazz cat daddy cat daddy mumble it's like it is like my favorite thing ever <laughs> the noises that dule makes in between lines and scenes it's right. it's real mr mr scene stiller That's yeah it. it's real <laughs> let me ask you a quick question ej um i think about this when i'm thinking from an actor's point of view how do you deal with those moments where you're in the middle of a scene and you have a voiceover and you have to be thinking to say what it is you're thinking? You know what I mean? Because you do it right on the money. I'm always curious of, God, how many takes did they get that before he finally figured out, oh, there it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, for me, um, it's it, it can get difficult at times, but one thing that I'm able to um, tap in the most and as much as... Uh, I know Laura, Sekon, and Dulé will probably all disagree with this. Uh, I bring funny to Dean. I like mm -hmm. to personally say that I can I can bring the comedy side to it. So um, the drama side, you always gotta you always gotta know when to and not to do stuff. Mm -hmm. So especially with the voiceovers, having the voiceovers in the show helps tremendously. Uh, believe it or not, um, if I feel like if the voiceover wasn't there, but I still knew it was being told through Saladin or Dean's eyes, it would make it more difficult because you wouldn't know how to feel. Stage directions don't always help. So being able to hear that voice um, and even have somebody reading it on set, the simplest things just help you um, really bring the character to life. So how I personally take the voiceover, um, depending on what the mood is, it just, it helps with the simplest things and you really just got to always bring it. Mm -hmm. It's just funny to see you come to life like you'll be in the middle of a scene and something's going on and your wheels will start turning, you'll go, like you'll just light up like, <laughs> oh, there it is. Like, ooh, I've come up with His facial expressions are everything, yeah. everything. You know, it's something that's really powerful about that, the fact that there is that that voice, that adult Dean voice. Mm -hmm. um, that adult Don Cheadle Dean. The amazing yes. Don Cheadle. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, the thing that's so interesting about that is in, in, I was watching this thing um, about Japanese culture and they were saying that in Japanese culture, people respect silences a lot more. Like they're able to, you'd ask them a question and they'll go, well, I think blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Whereas in our American culture, you ask them a question and if you think they're like, can you hear me? Wait, uh, <laughs> like we're in, a, we're in a hurry to like answer the next question or to talk. And like, I feel like it's, it's, it goes back to that natural human, way i think some of the things you know we're so eager to fill time we're filling time with our swipe swipe our text text our you know email email we're filling time constantly in this era but in days gone by people would they weren't watching tv they weren't binging um hulu you know or as they say hulu and commitment <laughs> they weren't doing that like back in the day people actually would sit and think and well what do i think about that and how do feel about that you know and so this gives us that opportunity to do that and me as a person who sometimes I move a little slower than the average 
person in in life i recognize that about myself and then there are other times where i move much faster i've already thought through things that people have done or are going to do then the other times where i'm like now what i appreciate it myself because it it lets me see us all as as actors we get to think about what we're about to do or say as the voiceover is is saying it to the audience so it's it's human it's natural it's it's something that I think we could go back to. I don't know that we'll ever go back to that time unless you're doing an electronics fast or whatever, because everything is type, 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 type. But um, I, I love that. And EJ's facial expressions, they just kill me. Everybody. <laughs> and you say, you say I'm, I'm going back to where you said, uh, how many takes did it take mm. for EJ to get that? I can tell you very few. Yeah. Because the fact of the matter is, EJ has the busiest schedule on the set. I'm sure. You only get him for a, a very limited number of hours because he's he's a minor or a, a, you know a, a youth. I want to say a minor because he's major in all that he does, but he's a major. Youth. You know what I'm saying? But uh, but between school and then coming to set and then going back to school and then coming to set and before you know the day is over, so there's not a lot of time with EJ to take. Oh, we're on take 13. We're on take. Okay. No, you have to get it and quit it. So okay. really, I, I think shows the brilliance of EJ to be able to know what it is, put down the the math book. Come to set, where we shoot it, got it, cool. Go back to set. It really is a, a big juggling act that is not easy to and do. And from the uh, from the actor side of that, I don't want to take all the credit when it comes to that because uh, I believe you can always learn from every experience you get. So from Saquon, Dulé, and Laura, I'm definitely learning how to maneuver and how to do things from when I'm on set. So I want to thank you guys as well because um, I mean, when you're surrounded by people who've been there for a long time, it's it it'll it'll get. I like to say it'll get a little easier when you come to the spot and you're new. Oh, that's true. I haven't, haven't been here that long, EJ. Calm down. <laughs> I'm two years ahead of you now. So, you know, like, hold on now. Everybody calm down. <laughs> well, look, speak, speaking of facial expressions, Laura, you got some, some facial expressions. Oh, yeah. Too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Are yeah, you just I naturally think... sassy or is that, or is that your, your character? Um, I think. Kim is definitely a little more sassy than I am. Um, <laughs> but again, I, as Laura, I'm very expressive with my face. So I've definitely brought that into Kim because if Kim is not saying something because she does like to talk as well, mm -hmm. you will see it on her face. You know exactly how she feels, what she's thinking. And I love it about her. <laughs> Laura will be there. She'll be in the room on her phone and shenanigans will be going on and she'll just be on her phone and look up and then <laughs> for sure. She got them looks practiced. <laughs> it's like I long come to Laura every episode and say, what is wrong with King? Like seriously. <laughs> it's like every time the camera turns, she says something without saying something. It's always mm -hmm. making me crack up. <laughs> <laughs> and I always say it's it's all in the eyes. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And once you can figure that out, you you really sat. That's why I was telling you, Julie, <clears throat> I've been watching you for years. There's something about where you are right now. You know, you're just in the pocket, you know, like there's no acting. There's no you just set in. And I noticed your voice goes into like a nice baritone. Like you you talk from like the back of your throat. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. It's nice. It's, yeah. Bill Williams definitely talks from a different place than me myself. But uh one, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. and, and look, and it's just one of those sweet spots where the right role with the right writing, with the right dynamic cast, telling the right story comes together. And that's really how I feel with Bill Williams. I can, I, I just connect, I connect to the guy. I know who he is and he sits right in my soul. Right. So before we wrap up, um, can you tell, any, you want to tell anybody about like, why they should watch the show or what to look forward to, you know, from, from you guys' point of view that you, that for playing the characters? Um, I will do a quick side note. This is very happy for me. I will make my, uh, I, I tried to negotiate for a writing credit, but they didn't give it to me. Uh, I'm not old enough yet, but I, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it in the future. I love you um, already. But, <laughs> uh, something, uh, this is, even even if my name never popped up on the screen, this was an accomplishment for me. Uh, like I made earlier, how I like to I like to say that my jokes are funny, the ones that I write. Um, <laughs> so in an episode coming ahead, and you'll know it when you see it. I actually make my writing debut when it comes to jokes on this. So if you don't, if you haven't seen that, if you catch up, make sure you watch that. Um, but besides, that, I would say this show is definitely something to watch because it's a show that everybody can relate to to some point. And uh, I would say that because you like you have a whole bunch of 
different stories that all come and take a piece from that story into your life um, in some, so, some sort of fashion. And the smallest example for a kid, it would be school. If you don't understand anything else in the school, you, I mean, in the show, you'll, un, you'll watch the show basically, basically off of school. Most things are, you'll automatically look at a situation and if it's not exactly what you're going through, you won't want to hear it because you feel like you're not being relatable to it in any sort of fashion. And I feel like that's not the case. There's always a way if you dissect it and break it down, you'll be able to find pieces that can actually help you relate to your life. Okay. Dropping some bars. I don't even need to, need to hear you rap on that. That's what's up. <laughs> well, thank you guys. I appreciate each and every one of you. I wish you guys nothing but success on this show. Like I said, you guys are really inspiring families, black families in particular, you know, to show us what we could do with it, you know, how we can live, how we can how we can love each other, you know, and um, and care about each other, and and still have a heart, you know. That's that's one of the things I love about the show. Um, so thank you guys, each and every one of you. Saycon, Dule, EJ, Laura, love you guys. Keep doing what you guys are doing. And um, before I end this, thank you guys again for listening to Conversations at Home. Again, I'm Hilliard Guest, and on behalf of SAG After Foundation, I want to thank you for sharing your your experiences process and craft with your fellow performers. So thank you guys all. Have a great, wonderful evening, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Cool.